Hello everybody. Welcome to Good Friend Art Studio and my name is Miss Carrie and today we are going to be working on a Harry Potter themed landscape. Very exciting. I got a little too excited about this one and I went crazy with my artwork but it's going to be a lot of fun and I hope you enjoy trying this one because it's got a lot of really cool art techniques and um, it's, it's just gonna turn out wonderful. I'm excited to get started. So let me talk to you a little bit about our watercolor today and what we're gonna be using with our materials. Um, I have my regular watercolors that I use all the time and we're gonna use most of these colors. And then I've got um, my water jug. So you need water to do watercolors, duh. But when we start using our black paint, you might either need to go clean your jar of water or get a second little dish of clean water. And so I've got two for myself, just so I don't have to hop up and jump down um, in, while I'm teaching. Um, the other thing that I do when I'm painting with watercolors is I tape down my paper. And the reason why I do this is because when you paint with watercolors, even a nice thick paper will start to ripple and it gets frustrating to paint on when your paper starts to do the wave. So I tape mine down so that it's a flat surface and it will prevent it from creating those ripples while you're in the process of painting. We're going to be sketching our castle and our landscape just with pencil. And then we're going to work on some watercolor. The little teeny tiny lights that you see in the castle are a different type of paint though. Um, at the very end when all is said and done, I'm going to get a little bit of craft paint. Any type of paint will do. Um, it could just be poster paint or little kits that come with little tubs of paint, um, but you want it to be, this is opaque, meaning you can't see through it, and watercolors is transparent, meaning you can see through it. So that's really the only difference. And we're just gonna use a teeny tiny bit of this and then I have a teeny tiny bit of white paint as well because we'll do a few highlights on the castles and then we'll put stars in the sky and ripples in the water just to finish it up. Those are the final touches. So let's get started. All right, so when I picked this image, I um, looked at a couple of different posters and I came up with my own version of it. So if you are a Harry Potter savant, you know all movies, all things Harry Potter, you're gonna say, Miss Carrie, your castle doesn't look like the real castle. And I will tell you, one, I did my best, and two, I did creative licensing, meaning I did the version that I wanna do. So in the handout, um, when I put an announcement down in the comments, I took a picture of my sketch because sometimes when I am drawing, you might not see the shapes quite as well. And so this is an enlarged version, bigger than um, what we're actually going to draw and paint, but it will show you all the little peaks of the rooftops and stuff a little bit easier. So every once in a while, I'll reference this. And what else do I need to tell you? I think we're all set. So we're gonna start just with a lot of drawing. I am a Ravenclaw, just FYI. Ravenclaws are the creative folks, right? So I figured that was my jam. <laughs> That's the house I belong in. So we're going to start with a horizon line and it's going to go straight across the middle of our page. I'm going to very lightly draw that in. So you can barely see it, but that's where we're going to set our castle on. So let's see, do I like where it is? Sometimes I have to stand up and make sure it's straight because I'm kind of at a funny angle when I'm teaching. There we go. All right, and we're going to start with just the landscape that our castle is sitting on. 
So let's take a look at this rocky base first. We're gonna fill this part in. And you notice it starts all the way over on the left side. So I'm gonna just start over here on my horizon line and I'm doing little wiggles. So these are just small rocks. And then we're going to come up right about, this is about the center of the page. That's where my first hill is going to start and it's rounded. And watch this, I'm gonna make a couple of other hills coming down from that. And we'll make these look interesting with shadows. And then there is a steep hill that comes down the other side like this. All right, so if you can picture the castle, this is the steep set of stairs that lead down to that little carriage house. And we'll draw that little guy in in just a minute. All right, so now that we have sort of our first hill, now we're going to work on the parts that goes all the way up here. So jump back down and we'll come up and down. Here's another one, up, and then a last one. And see how they get a little higher and higher as they go in this direction? There's one more that kind of fits there in between. So you can add that in. So that, I know that seems silly, it doesn't look like much, but that is really the basis for what we're going to be painting. Okay, so before I forget, let's put in our little house here. Um, I'm gonna just erase that little spot there because that's where I want our house to sit. Okay, so let's right on the little horizon line, put a little rectangle. And then next to that rectangle, put a tall rectangle with a little triangle roof on it like that. And now that you've got those two pieces, we can add the roof on the side. So it goes straight across and then the back of it has the same angle as the front of it. And now that we have our little house, let's put a peak on it. So I'm gonna put a little square and then a little triangle. And there we go, there's like our little carriage house. We can even put a little archway for our front door and then we'll add a few extra details when it comes time to paint. All right, now that we have this, we can put in the beginning of our castle. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're going to take the measurement of this center peak, because that is really the focus of the castle, isn't it? It's the tallest thing, it's where they all live. And so watch this, I'm gonna say, this is about the same height as this. So we want them to be about even on our paper. So I'm gonna go like this, and then I'm gonna go boop, and put a dot right at the top of my finger. So I know that's how high I want my rooftop to be for my castle. And I'm gonna start with that rooftop. It's a triangle that's kind of the shape of an upside down ice cream cone. It's um, kind of a long and skinny triangle. And then it's got a curved base of the rooftop. And then we're just gonna bring this all the way down. We're gonna cover up part of this as we build the rest of the building, but this gives us something to start with. All right, the next thing that you'll recognize is there is a part that goes in this little ravine is what I'm calling it. So I'm going to make a line to kind of create a bridge and then make a second line under it. And down in this open area, they have these really tall tunnel shapes, like 
long skinny upside down U's. And that's filled with light at nighttime. It's really pretty. So that's a very significant part of our castle because it's very easy to recognize. Okay, now let's keep going. We have right on the top of this little mound here, right in the center, we have another tower, but it's far shorter than this one. So I'm gonna put a smaller rectangle in and add a triangle on top. You're gonna to see this shape a whole lot. And then I'm just gonna erase the line that was going through it, kind of cleaning up as I go. Okay, now we're ready to add on the Great Hall. The Great Hall juts out over the edge of the cliff, so we have to build its base first. So I'm not gonna start here. I'm actually gonna start further down and do a straight line up. And then I'm going to do a straight line out. And so there's sort of like this walkway that goes around the Great Hall and it juts out like that. And then let's keep going up. We have, our Great Hall is gonna, the roof line is going to stop about halfway between the top of this tower and the start of the roof. So let me go ahead and draw that line so I know how high I'm going. And then there is a slanted rooftop. And let's go ahead and draw the base of the roof there. Okay, a few little additions to this. The first thing is there's a teeny tiny little peak there. I'm not sure what that part is. And then on this tip of the roof, we're gonna put a little tower. And then in the middle of the roof, there's another little tower. It's a little bit taller than the first. Like They look like little pencils sticking up. Now we're gonna do a lot to make these tall windows in here, but we're not gonna do it right now. We're going to keep getting our shapes. All right, now let's keep going. We're just gonna work our way to the edge. So sitting down in front of um, the dormitory tower, this big tall middle one, is a smaller building. And so I'm gonna do a line that goes like this straight across and then this is the bottom of the roof and there's a couple of arched windows that i want to make sure that i remember to get in there so i'm going to go ahead and draw those in just little upside down u shapes with a bottom across and let's see are there a bunch more of those hold on i'm looking at re my reference photo every once in a while to make sure i got it all right, the rest of the windows we can add in at the end. All right, so we're going to keep going. We have um, a building that continues to the side. So I'm going to, it's a, at a little bit of, of a funny angle. So because we're looking up from the water up towards the castle, some of these angles look a little funny. And so we just go with it because because that's the way it is, we can't change it. <laughs> okay, so I'm doing another rooftop. So there's the top, the bottom's a little bit longer, and then there's an angled line to connect it. And there is a big tower on the end. So see how I just Right there on the corner, I built another little rectangle with a triangle on top. And there's just a little bit of one 
that you can see peeking over that building. So I'll add one there. All right, and then this drops right down like that. All right, there's a little bit of something that I don't know what it is. I'm sure somebody knows all the parts of Hogwarts, but I'm not sure what's happening back in this area. Although we do have a nice archway that I wanna put in this building before we move on. So let's go ahead and draw a door. And this is a big one. Okay, now there's, it seems to be a breaking castle. I wanna say maybe it's like a walled courtyard or something if I had to guess. And then there's a whole nother section of buildings over here. So we're gonna jump over to this side and do our first tower. And none of the towers are as tall as our dormitory. That's our peak. So let me put in our first one here. There's one. And then next door to this tower, there's another building that has a triangle roof. And then it continues over. So it's almost like it's a square with a triangle over the left side of it. All right, and then the next building is kind of, they're kind of overlapping a little bit. So I'm going to start the tower on the edge of this one on the left-hand side. And there's a little skinny tower and a triangle in between and then another skinny tower. Like that. And then one final tower that goes in the middle. All right, last little sh um, piece here is just a little line and one more tower because we don't have enough towers. All right, and let's put a few archways in. There's one, let's see. We'll make sure we have a little window in that arch and two long windows here. And the rest of them we can just add with little dots when we're done. All right, back over to our great hall. I am going to do this. I'm going to put a long rectangle here because there is a whole row of windows that's gonna go in there and we're gonna fill that with yellow so that it's really bright and light. Okay, so that is all the shapes of our Hogwarts. And see how you just kind of simplify it and make it just look like common shapes that are easy to draw. And then as we add layers of paint, um, you'll start seeing it come to life. All right, now that we have Hogwarts, Let's do some of the landscape that's behind. We have a hill that goes way up on the right side, on the left side rather, and it's kind of behind this shape. And then we have another hill that's going to scoot behind our castle. So it kind of comes up behind and then keeps going that way. And then there's the just the beginning of one extra little piece of land right there that fills in. Um, question was, will we draw Hagrid's hut? If I knew where Hagrid's hut lived on this little piece of property, I would say go for it. I don't know where it is. If you want to draw Hagrid's hut, you could definitely do that. I think that his hut is kind of round, isn't it? So it would be pretty easy to draw. You just have to figure out where you wanna stick it. All right, now that we have this part done, let's fix the kind of open-ended jagged edges we have down here. We're just going to have some of the water's edge 
be a line. So I'm just kind of going over my horizon line and then where I see it jut down like this, watch what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go up and then have like a little foot jut down. So maybe there's pieces that come out and form like little cove areas. And then it comes down right in front of our carriage house and across. All right, we're ready to add some boats to this water. All right, we're going to do three boats down here. I'm gonna see if I can scoot this up just a little bit so that you can see the bottom of my paper. I think that worked. And our three boats are going to obviously be down in the water, but they're gonna be different sizes because they are going in the direction here. And so they get smaller and smaller as they go um, towards the castle. So let's start with boat number one. We're going to put boat number one. Um, it's a little bit, if this is the center of the page, it's a little bit to the left of the page. And the first thing that we're going to draw is the back of the boat, which is a simple rectangle. And it kind of has curved edges. Then after you draw that, the boat is going in this direction. So I'm going to do a little dot for the tip of my boat so that you can see what I'm doing. And we're gonna draw the edge of the boat that's away from us, and it's a big curve. It comes from the corner of the boat, goes out, and then up to the point. So it's almost like a little fish hook shape. And then once you have that, you can connect the other side to it. So it's kind of a strange shape because of how it's going away from us. Let's draw the edge of the boat here. So we're gonna come down to where the curve is and draw down and then connect it. I almost think that shape is even a stronger curve than what I did. Yep, sure is, that looks already better. So the nice thing about these little boats is that because it's in the dark and because they're teeny tiny, we don't have to draw too much detail. We know there's a boat, we know there's some sort of lamp. So I'm gonna draw a line up and I'm gonna lightly do a little circle there. That's just the glow of the lantern. You don't even have to draw the lantern. But we do have to draw some people inside the boat. So let me show you how I draw simple figures. We're going to start sort of right on the side. And I start by drawing just sort of an upside down U shape. That is the shoulders of the Hogwarts student. Then I do a little sort of donut ring around the top. I know that's teeny tiny. And the last thing is you do a circle for the head. So head, this is the hood. So it's like a little like ruffly oval shape that sits on top of its shoulders. And then the cape. Now that doesn't look like a person, but again, it's just gonna be a silhouette. It's just the background or the, the shadow of the person. So you don't need a lot of detail. All right, let's do another one. So you do the shoulders, the hood, that's hanging out behind them, the head. All right, this one I'm gonna do a little bit differently because maybe he's sitting facing the others. So I'm still gonna do the shoulders, but this time the hood is just gonna be on one side, kind of like a floppy triangle sitting over there on the left. And then because of that, his head's going to be a little off center because he's leaning forward. You could even, Give one some longer hair. Give someone some messy hair. Give someone some curly hair. 
like that. But again, we're gonna paint over it, so don't worry about those little tiny details. We'll, we'll get there. I'm also gonna do just a few little lines going out. This will just help when it comes to painting, deciding where you want shadows and light to be. Okay, let's do another one. Who lives in the carriage home? I think the carriage home is just where the boats dock. I don't think anybody lives down there. All right, we've got our first one. Let's do our second one. It's gonna be kind of coming in from this corner down here. So again, here comes the rectangle. Because it's coming at an angle, the curve's gonna be slightly different. It's gonna sort of curve in this direction. So I've got the top of my boat and then the bottom comes down like that. Let's give it a little lines for where the ripples are gonna hit the boat. Let's put our little light up in the sky and let's fill it with some kids. All right, we're gonna have, let's see, let's have one in the back of the boat. We'll have two sitting next to each other. Maybe one's, watch this, one's gonna lean its arm. He's leaning on the edge of the boat, so that's kind of like, his elbow. Okay, now I'm getting fancy, aren't I? And then just so we don't have to draw any of his legs, I'm gonna put one more kid right here in front of him. There, now we covered up where his legs would go. We don't have to worry about it. All right, so we have four kids in that boat. One more boat, and this one's going to be the furthest back. I'm gonna to try to put it in between these, and it's gonna form a triangle, which triangles are really important when you're talking about creating composition. Um, triangles, I'm gonna see if I can get this light to stop doing its kind of bright flickering thing. No, I don't know if I can get it to stop. All right, let me go back. All right, so here's our final little boat. It's going straight towards the carriage house, so I'm gonna put a point where the tip of it would be and create that little fish hook shape. There's the line for the other side of the boat. And then you see just a little bit of the edge there. Let's put some lines out for where the water is gonna be coming up to the boat. And let's put a few little kiddos sitting in this one too. Now remember, they get smaller and smaller. So let's see, here's one, here's two, and there's three. Okay, we've got our people in. It's painting time, it's exciting. All right, so we're gonna do the most fun part first because I love it so much. We're going to paint our nighttime sky first. So I decided to do just sort of a very fun, colorful galaxy type sky. So we're going to be using all sorts of blues and purples and magentas in this one. All right, let me scoot this a little bit further down so we can all see the sky. And I'm gonna be using my medium round paintbrush. So a round paintbrush is round because the top of it is round. Um, and it's not that big. I use this for a lot of my watercolors. And we are not going to use the full brush. We're not gonna like smush it down. We're basically going to add water with just the tiptoe of the paintbrush. And you may have heard your elementary school teacher say this, is that your paintbrush has to stay on its tiptoes when it's painting. Um, and that, I'll show you what that does. But we're going to start with just painting it with water. So I'm going to dip my paintbrush in just clean water 
and I'm going to paint the whole sky, carefully going around my castle. So I go real slow when I go down to those edges. And you want your paper to be shiny. It doesn't need to have a big puddle of water sitting on it. Just want it to be shiny. And we're getting ready to do a technique that's called wet on wet painting. And what that means is you are painting wet paint on top of a wet piece of paper. And it allows it to blend together on its own and it almost creates like a tie-dye effect, which I think is really cool when you're trying to create like a galaxy type sky, um, or this would be really neat if you were doing Aurora Borealis, the, um, the Arctic lights that come in like all the fun greens and turquoise colors. It would look really pretty that way too. So you can change up how you want your sky to look. You can add more of the colors you like, less of the colors you don't want to include. Um, I'm just gonna show you the techniques so that you know how to do it. Okay, so I've got my um, paper nice and wet. I'm going to start with a teal turquoise color. So I'm gonna get my paintbrush nice and colored and I'm just gonna start touching the tip of my paintbrush to the sky. And I'm doing a few little swiggles and things, but I'm not doing big brush strokes. I'm just, just touching it. See how that wet paper responds? I just think it's the coolest thing. All right, I'm gonna clean my brush and then I'm gonna jump into my regular blue. And I'm gonna add that. And again, I'm not using brush strokes, I'm just touching the page. And it does, it's almost like fireworks, isn't it? Just kind of going all over the sky. So fun. Okay. All right, let's add some magenta. The magenta I'm not gonna use quite as much. I just want some touches of this fun color. So I'm just gonna lay it in a little bit. There we go. And then finally, I'm gonna add purple. No, I'm not finally, I've got more colors than that. What am I thinking? All right, so our sky is gonna get darker and darker as we add to it. So here comes our purple. I do like the outer edges to be a little bit darker than the inside of the sky. I like the way that looks. All right, I'm gonna carefully go right down next to my castle roof line. And paint that in because I don't want I don't want like a white halo around my building I want it to look like it's sitting right there in the middle of this amazing sky okay now we're gonna add some black so black always is the one that makes me nervous whenever I'm painting with it because once you add black it's hard to pull back from that you just gotta go for it so I'm gonna start at the corners and add some black in the corners.
this will get more and more interesting as it dries. All right, now that I've added the black, I think I'm gonna go back and hit it with my other colors just a little bit stronger, just so that they're quite as bold as the black. So I've got my teal back in there. some more blue in there. All right, again, see, I'm not doing any brush strokes. Whatever happens on the paper is all the water. The water's doing it itself. All right, let's do just a little bit more purple. You know, it's hard to stop because <laughs> it's, it's super fun. It's fun to see what the paint does by itself. All right, I need to let it live. I'm just gonna let it be. So I'm not gonna touch that for quite a long time because you can see how wet it is and I do not want to disturb it. So we're gonna let it rest and not do anything and work on other parts of the painting. If I still need to get back up here and start working in this section, sometimes I grab my hair dryer and I do a little drying to speed up the process. But I think we've got uh, plenty of other things to work on that we can work on that later. All right, so let's jump down to the next part of our painting, our hillside. And we're gonna build up layers. So I'm going to start with a brown. And this is gonna be the first layer of the rocks that Hogwarts sits on. So I'm going to just get some brown. This time we're not doing wet on wet. See how I just took my brush and went straight on the dry paper? Because I, I want this to stay put. I really don't want it to run anywhere. And I'm gonna fill up this whole first little rock ridge just with brown. Gonna go around my little carriage house. And we have brown. Okay. All right, let's also add some color to our boats. Our boats are going to have sort of a brownish orange color. So I'm going to take my darker orange. Yeah, I think you can still see that. And put a little spot of orange there. And then I'm gonna take some brown and stir that together. So I have a good orangey brown color. And we're going to paint our, our boats. So I'm still using the same size brush. I'm just using the tiptoe of it. So, and I really, see how close I am to the, the bristles of the brush? When I'm trying to get those little tiny spots, I hold it nice and close like that so I can control it really well. All right, we're gonna add other colors to this boat eventually, but that's our base color for each of these boats. You're also gonna notice that I jump around when I'm doing watercolors, and that's because we have to let the different spots breathe um, give them enough time to dry before we go adding other colors. So I'm just going to go on the inside of the boat in between those people. Ooh, the 
this one's so teeny tiny. I do have a tiny brush. If I really needed to switch to it, I could. All right, let's clean our brush off and we're going to add some yellow to our castle. Now we're gonna add this yellow and then we're gonna cover a lot of it up with black, but by adding the yellow, it allows us to get those windows all lit up. So I switched to my yellow paint and the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna paint the inside of that rectangle on the great hall because I know that that has a big row of windows there. I'm also going to paint the insides of those windows, this archway, the little arches down below the bridge. I'm going to go inside that little carriage house, give that door a light. And any of the little windows that I've drawn I'm going to paint. Now, if you need to switch and you have a smaller brush, you can switch to a smaller brush for this. I'm just lazy. I don't want to clean more than one brush. So if you have a little one, you can do that. And it will probably make it slightly easier than what I'm doing right now. There's also some areas where there's like up lighting, accent lighting and on Hogwarts Castle as well. So I'm gonna add a little bit of that. For instance, right above the roof line on this tower, there's a little bit of like up lighting there. So I'm gonna add that in. There's a little bit of that lighting on the side of that tower. And then sort of all along this part of the castle, there seems to be a lot of like glowing light there. So I'm gonna fill that in as well. And I think that's all the areas, I'm double checking. Yep, that's all the areas that we need yellow on the castle. Let's go down to our little boats and we know that the glow from the lanterns is gonna create a nice yellow shape. So we're gonna fill those circles in with yellow. I'm also just going to draw a yellow line coming down. So the idea is that the light is hitting the post and so the post is going to be that same yellow color. And then it's also going to hit the top of the heads of the children inside the boat. So I'm just going to paint the top of their heads yellow. And that this a lot of this will be covered up eventually, but like the top of the heads, maybe a little bit of their shoulders. We're gonna have just a lot of yellow, kind of making them glow inside the boat so that. All right, so gotta go smaller. Here's this teeny tiny little guy. Okay, there even would be some yellow in our water. So I'm going to add where those lines are that I created, especially towards the front of the boat. I'm gonna add some yellow little ripples on the water. Some of these might get covered up, but I'm gonna go ahead and put them in there anyway. Alrighty. Let's work on the water. The water is going to use the same colors that the sky has, and we're going to build them up in layers the same way we did with the sky too. So I'm going to start with some clean water and I'm going to get my paper wet. We're going to do small sections of the water at a time we're not going to try to do the full like pond this way before i get started though 
I think I do want to dry the yellow on here just so it doesn't bleed or blend into what we're working on. So you're gonna have to deal with my noise for just a moment. And let me see if I can quickly get this to dry. So I put it on low when I dry and I hold it a few, at least five inches away from my paper because you don't want to catch your paper on fire. Oh my goodness. All right, so it's going to get noisy for a second. I apologize in advance. Here I go. Now I'm ready to get some clean water on my brush and I'm going to start right along the water's edge here and make this all really wet. Anywhere that you make it wet, your paint will travel there. It's like it's magnetic. The water, water is attracted to water. All right, I have that nice and painted. I'm gonna come down. I'm leaving a little bit of my paper dry as I do this. I'm like doing horizontal brush strokes, but some of my paper is left dry and I'll show you what happens when I do that, the reasoning behind it. All right, so I'm gonna go sort of down to where my first boat is and then stop. Let's start with our blue. I'm gonna start on the edge and pull it across. See how I don't even have to do much? I just kind of add a little bit and the water just picks it up and moves it across. All right, I did that side. Let's start from this edge. And wherever it's wet, it picks up this blue color, and I barely have to touch the paper. So I do like leaving a little bit of white space because we're gonna be adding so many colors, I want them to overlap and peek through in places. All right, so that's the blue. Let's add blue to the rest. Before I add more colors, I'm gonna do each section with that color. All right, so I'm doing my clean water first. Going around my boats so that our water doesn't cover up our boats. All right, everybody hanging in there. This is a long one, guys. So I understand if you say, that's it, I need lunch, <laughs> and you leave and you come back. That's why I post these as videos, so that you can go back and do these at any time. And sometimes painting along with an artist is hard. I know that I have done many art lessons by watching Bob Ross's TV show. And he will be painting a sky or a mountain and you look down to make sure colors and when you look up, he has five trees. And you're like, what did he do? I didn't even see it. So I understand how things can go um, too fast for you. And just remember that I've already painted this once, so I know what my plan is. I don't have to think about it as much as you all do because this is your first time. Okay, so we've got the blue done. Let me clean that off. 
Oh, and then some people need snacks brought to them while they're painting. That's a good idea too. <laughs> okay, let's throw in some of that teal color. This is my favorite color. I think I include it in almost every lesson that I do. <laughs> All right, and because my paper is still wet from the blue, it's easy to just add little pops of teal in there and it will just kind of blend with what's already on the paper. Okay, let's add some magenta. The magenta, we're only going to add a teeny tiny bit of it, and it's mostly going to kind of live right in the triangle space between our three boats. So I'm not adding too much. I'm just kind of putting it right around where our boats are hanging out. And it might blend on the page and look a little bit more purpley, and that's okay. All right. I'm going to use whatever paints on my brush. I think it's just leftover magenta. And see how I'm carefully going around this little boat? I don't want it to be like super dark around there, so just lightly adding a little bit of paint. I'm gonna do the same thing for this one. I'm gonna go around each little character sitting in the boat, but it's not super dark. Okay, it's time to add some black paint. So I always kind of brace myself, get ready for it. Here comes the black paint. All right, I'm gonna start on the outside edges and I'm gonna pull it in towards the center because I want the center of my water to be lighter than, let's look at this again. See how it's super dark on the left-hand side and it's dark up near the edges, but right here, it's lighter. That's what we're gonna go for. So let's start on this edge here. And we're gonna cover up a lot of what we've painted, but when it dries, you'll be able to see a little bit of that color still kind of peeking through. start at the bottom. I know I want this part to be dark. I've stopped talking, you can tell I'm concentrating. Okay, so we need to let that water dry a little bit and uh, work on something else. And then we can add a little bit more to it. Once it's dry, we can add some more colors to it. Okay, 
Carrie, stop fussing. All right, I'm done. All right, so let's do something else while we wait. We can work on our hills back behind Hogwarts because our sky is getting dry. It's looking pretty good. And so I feel comfortable painting right next to it. I don't think it will bleed into our sky at all. So let's start with the furthest most little hill. That's going to be a purple color. So I'm going to jump right into my purple. And I added a little bit more water because it was a little brighter than I wanted it to be. There we go. Now it's getting to be sort of a lavender color. That's more of what I wanted. Okay. And here's a little trick. I can see that I've got a lot of water sitting there. And if I add my next hill, it's going to run. So I always have a paper towel with me. And I like to use the edge of my paper towel and just kind of sit it down into that puddle and let it soak up some of the paint. And that helps keep, prevent it from running into the next section. So you can even just clean up the edges a little bit. There we go. And it looks better. Okay, let's do this hill right here. We're going to mix some green and brown together because if we do just green by itself, it's going to be too bright. So I've got my green and I'm going to clean that off and I'm going to go into my brown and stir that together. And I'm looking for sort of a olive color, army green color. Yeah, that's pretty good. And we're gonna fill this in. And while it's still wet, I'm going to make a few little darker spots in there. So let's see, I'll add a little bit more brown to make that color darker. And I'm even gonna add a little bit of blue. Sort of makes like a brownish blue gray color. And I'm just gonna put it along the base, right against those little rocks. Cause there would be more shadow down below and then just kind of tap it. It'll give it the appearance that there's, you know, bushes or something going on there. We're also going to add a little bit of shade right at the base of our little purple hill. So let me grab my purple again, make a little puddle of that. And let's see what happens if I add brown to that one. Yeah, I kind of like that. So purple and a little bit of brown will kind of create a plum color. And see, it's trying to run away from me because things aren't quite dry yet. I've got my paper towel ready to jump in and save the day. Okay, now we can do the hillside that's going back behind Hogwarts. We just have to be a little careful because we're dealing with um, little teeny tiny spaces. I'm gonna do this one wet on wet. So I'm going to wet my paper back behind Hogwarts. Get down into all those little tiny spots.
Okay. Let's do this one a different shade of green. So I'm going to see what happens if I mix up green with a little bit of my turquoise color, which is super pretty, but a little too bright. So I'm going to take just a dab of brown and mix that in. And that just kind of, it's called graying it out when you add a neutral color to soften what you have. Um, I'm even going to add just a touch of water and that'll help too. All right, so just like we did with the sky, you don't have to use too much of a brush stroke. You just kind of touch your paintbrush to the wet paper and it does the work for you. And just use the little tiptoe of the paintbrush to go down in between those towers. If you accidentally paint over a tower, it's not the end of the world because so much of Hogwarts is going to be outlined with black and so we can go back and fix it. You haven't lost a tower. Okay, I don't think I missed anything. All right, but I do want to make it a little bit darker at the base, just like I did with the others. So let me go back to my original color and I'm going to see what happens if I add a little bit of blue to it. That'll make it a darker color. And maybe just a touch of that brown again. All right, and then I'm going to just touch the bottom edge of this shape and it's still wet so it will pick up that color and blend it. And I'm just kind of going down into the little dark spots in between the castle. Trying to get that a little bit darker. Cool. All right. Now that we've done the background hills, let's do our next layer for our brown hills that are in front because they look pretty flat. We're going to mix up a blue and brown together to get that kind of gray, blue-gray color that I was talking about just a minute ago. So it, I would say it's two, two parts blue, one part brown and that will get you a nice blue-gray color. And with this color, we're gonna add in a layer of shadows to each section of our hillside. So for instance, if I'm imagining moonlight that's hitting, it's shining down and it's kind of hitting the castle and hitting the hills coming from the upper left corner. We can't see it, but it's there. Then I'm gonna add shadows to the right side of all my shapes. So, Make that a little bit darker. There we go. So I'll add it there and then I'll go right up to the edge of the line and start the shadow for my next shape. Same with this one. It's going to be pretty dark on this one. And then this hillside is in the shadow of the castle. So it the whole thing is kind of dark. I might leave just a little bit of that brown showing, but not too much. All right, let's go down. We're gonna go down the middle of this triangle 
and watch what I'm doing. I'm leaving sort of like a little path. Remember, we've got stairs coming down towards our carriage house. So I want some of this area to stay brown so that it can look like there's a little lit path there. And then I'm just doing one shape at a time, adding that darker color to the middle. The um, boats are coming. We needed to let our water dry before we tried to do anything with boats. So that's why I jumped around a little bit. But the boats are coming up. All right, I'm gonna put just a little bit on the, these little bottom rocks to make them darker. Okay, so that is two layers on that one. I think that's looking nice, so I'm gonna let that dry. Let's jump down to the boat. Somebody asked about boats, and yes, it is boat time. So we're going to add some black to our boats, and here's where we're gonna start. Let me get my black nice and wet, there we go. All right, the back side of our boat, that rectangle piece, we're going to paint black on top of that rectangle. And you can see how a little bit of that lighter color is shining through. You can see just a little bit. We're gonna do that for all three of them. Okay, and while we have black on our paintbrush, let's go ahead and do the little silhouettes that we have. So I'm just taking the tip toe of my paintbrush and I'm going to touch the bottom of the head and I'm gonna fill in the little shoulder shape. See, I'm trying to keep a little bit of that yellow still showing So it's like the back side of his head, the back side of their shoulders is all black. And that's because you've got such a bright light in front of them. What is my Patronus? You know, I think I took one of those quizzes once upon a time and for the life of me, I don't know. Um, I will say that I think my Patronus would be some type of bird. And my daughters will tell you <laughs> that birds tend to fly at me. I don't know why, but they like to just jump in front of my cars, swing down in front of my head. I'm not sure what it is about me and birds, but I might not love birds, but they love me. And I'm not sure what that's about. So if I had to have a Patronus, it would probably be a bird of some sort coming at me. Okay, so we've got our little blobby outlines for our little kids there. And even though they look like blobs up close, when you put it kind of in the whole composition, all of a sudden it makes sense. You understand what you're looking at. 
All right, we are going to jump back up to our Hogwarts castle and we're gonna do a base coat on the castle. And this is just going to make it easier when it comes time to add our dark shadows and the black parts of it. So let's do a base that is mostly blue. I'm gonna take my blue and add just a squidge, that's a technical term, just a little dip in the brown and stir it up and make that kind of blue gray color again that we have been working with a couple of times. And we're going to color in this almost entirely. So the whole castle, except for the parts that we've already painted yellow, let's go in and fill this in. That's a little too dark. I want it lighter than that. So I'm gonna add some water to it and thin down that paint. There we go. So I wanna say, was it last summer? There was a Patronus quiz going around. You could go on to the JK Rowling website or something like that and take a quiz and find out what your Patronus is, what Hogwarts house you belonged in and all that good stuff. I cannot remember the results, but I know that I did that with my girls and I had, we were doing a lot of Harry Potter artwork at the summer camp where I was teaching. So that was a, Interesting topic of conversation for everybody. What's your Patronus? All right, see how I'm just kind of going up to the edge of that yellow glow and doing just a little bit around the edges? You can still see it glowing. But I'm also just overlapping just a little bit. So the color that we're doing is going to end up being a, um, a highlight part. And then we'll paint black on top wherever we want there to be shadows. So a lot of Hogwarts is going to be black, but it will have this kind of blue gray bright area. So we need it all to be, have the same base color first before we can add the shadows. All right, I'm also gonna go down. I feel like I didn't paint right up next to my carriage house, so I'm gonna fix that just a little bit. There we go. Making sure everything's filled in. Okay, I am going to be ready to add black paint. So what that means is I need my hair dryer again. I need to dry my Hogwarts castle completely dry so that when I add the black paint, it doesn't just go everywhere that's still wet. All right, so plug your ears, here I go.
Hmm, if I had a Hogwarts pet, what would it be? Um, I think my Hogwarts pet would be a rabbit because I've always wanted a rabbit. And why not? That seems to be a perfect opportunity to have a rabbit. Okay, I'm gonna switch to my tiny paintbrush because we're going to be adding black to the details of our Hogwarts castle. So I'm gonna, if you have a tiny paintbrush, hooray, if you don't have a tiny paintbrush, you could still use your bigger one. Just remember to use the tiptoes of it. And I like to make sure that it has a nice little point. So sometimes I kind of prepare the bristles so that I can get a thin point there. Okay, so let me get my black paint. And we're just gonna kind of work our way across. Let's start with our carriage house. Um, we're going to paint the right side of everything black because our highlight is coming from the left side. So the right side's gonna be dark. So the right side of the tower. This whole triangle part of the house is gonna be dark. I'm gonna go underneath the rooftop. I'm even gonna pull that down. Do a little bit across the top there. There. All right, let's, while I, we've got black on our brush, I don't wanna forget to add something that looks like steps. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take this little brush and just do tiny little lines that look like they could be little steps coming down. See how cute that is? And it's not hard to do at all. All right, carriage house done. Let's start over here. Now this part of our castle is almost completely in the dark. So I'm going to kind of fill this in around the doorway. Go down the tower, around that little window. And because I have a tiny brush, I can do these little lines, but you could also just fill it in. If you don't have a tiny paintbrush, you could also switch to a thin marker and you could do all this with a marker too. So don't get frustrated with a big paintbrush. You can always go to a little marker if you're at that point. And I'm not painting the whole thing. See how I'm just kind of doing the outline and I'm doing sort of like the right edge underneath the rooftops. And I'm doing a little bit on the right side of each of my shapes. We've done, if you've been with me before, you know that I've talked a little bit about doing hatch marks. Hatch marks are when you're shading a shape. So for instance, this triangle, I would do little lines coming right to left to create sort of a little shadow appearance. All right, this part that I don't know what it is, I'm gonna just fill it in with black because it's not defined. We don't know what that is. Little shadow down between the rocks there. Okay, all right, let's keep going. Because after we get all of this 
in the black, then we get to start adding the fun little details um, with the white and yellow paint. And I think that kind of brings Hogwarts to life. I think it looks really cool. All right, all of this is dark. This part's dark too, so I'm going to carefully go around these little bright spots. Alright, the rooftop for this section is gray and then underneath it's nice and dark. So I think I'll go ahead and paint in the bottom part and then water down my paint so that I can do above. All right, so I'm gonna leave that empty for right now. And I just drew a line up across the top of the rooftop and then I did little lines coming down to sort of fill it in. I don't want it to be completely black, but do you see how I did that just to give it a little bit of shadow on top? All right, let's work our way up to the peak here. I know that I want there to be a strong black line it goes all the way up the right side and that goes all the way under that rooftop and then I'm just going to do a few little pull a few tiny little lines down because again I don't want it to be black I want it to have sort of interesting shapes going on there. I also need this part to be pretty dark. So I'm going to dip it in water. Let the water do the work here. There we go. There we go. Okay, a few more little peaks and then we can stop being so fussy with this teeny tiny little thing. There's one. I just remembered we missed a very important part of Hogwarts. We'll have to paint it in. There's a little tiny tower that comes out of this rooftop here. I always thought that was that's where I'd want to live. In fact, I think somebody told me that's where Harry and Ron live, but I don't know this for sure. All right, the whole rooftop is black on this one. We're on the Great Hall now. So we're gonna fill all of that rooftop part in black. down the side here and I'm gonna go right along that bottom edge where it meets that balcony section and fill that in just a little bit 
So we're still painting around that yellow spot. We're going to come back to that in just a moment. Let's finish up this little balcony section. It needs to have a dark shadow at the base. All right, so there's the edge of the balcony, and then all this underneath can be nice and dark. Okay, so for the great hall, I'm going to get the black on my teeny tiny brush, or you can do this with pen, like I said, and I'm just gonna do little lines going down to make very long windows all along the Great Hall, like that. I'm also, now I'm gonna, now I'm gonna switch to my pen because right along this bridge area, no, that pen wasn't working. All right, right along this bridge area here, I'm gonna outline it. And then I don't know what's going on here. I think it's like that walking bridge that you can walk through, but I'm just doing little vertical lines to break that up into little sections too. The other thing I'm gonna do is at the top of each tower, I'm just gonna put like a little line up. Each tower has like a point coming out the top of it. And I'm doing that with pen. Okay, remember I said we had to out, add a tower? You don't have to if you don't want to, but right here lives a tower. And it juts out like that. So what I'm gonna do is just color in most of it black. We can add a little highlight on it when we come back with our ink pen, with our, sorry, other, our, our other paints that we're getting ready to use. All right. We are ready to jump into the other paints and this is what I think makes it kind of magical looking. So I'm just gonna get a little plate or a little bowl and Put just a little dab of my yellow paint and a little dab of my white paint. There we go. I don't even need that much. And I need my tiny brush to be clean because that's what we're gonna be using. Let's start with white. I'm gonna put my tiny brush in my white paint and I'm going to put some stars in the sky. So I'm barely touching my paintbrush to my sky. Now, if we had a bigger sky, I might get out the toothbrush that I use for painting projects and do a little brush flicking with my toothbrush because I think that makes a nice splatter in the sky. But because our sky is fairly small, I don't necessarily want to do that. I think it would be too much. Okay, you can keep going. You can keep adding stars if you want to. Put some over here. You just wanna use the tippy toe of your brush so that it doesn't get your stars too big. While we have white paint on our paintbrush, let's add a few ripples. So right up against the rocks, the water would create a little bit of a um, splash or at least a wave or something. So right along there, I'm not drawing a complete line, but I'm adding just a little white to the water's edge and maybe just a little bit coming off the edge. And they're all horizontal lines. 
And then around the boats, you would also have some ripples. So let's add those in there too. Favorite teacher, um, favorite Harry Potter teacher. All right, this is this is testing my Potter knowledge. Um, favorite, I think I'm gonna have to say McGonagall because I just loved her character and I always loved how she really kind of was sympathetic and stuck up for the kids. I just think she did a great job being Professor McGonagall. Okay, so see how I just put some white lines, some ripples around there, and that gives you a sense of sort of moonlight hitting the water. All right, we're ready to dive into our yellow paint. Not quite yet, hang on. <laughs> I got too excited. We're going to take our white paint and just tap in a few little highlights. So that little tower that we just added, I did a little highlight on the right or the left side of that. So that looks like the moonlight's hitting it. There's a little moonlight coming down the tower. Let's put just a little moonlight on the edge of these two since they're sticking out there. And just in a few more spots. I don't think you want to do all of them. Just a few. Now we can clean our brush. Professor Flithwick. I do not know Flithwick. What did Flithwick, you're gonna have to, I can't even say the name. What did that professor do? I don't remember that one. Okay, I'm dipping my tiny paintbrush in my yellow, and let's do a couple things. We're going to brighten up our lantern glow and add some more stronger yellow ripples in the water. We're almost done, I promise. We're getting there. I know this is a long lesson. Okay, we've got our ripples in the water. Now we can add little windows, lights in the windows. So I'm looking at my picture and I'm just gonna put a few little dots here or there to make it look like there's a few extra little windows in our towers. The carriage house. I'm gonna give the carriage house a little extra light. Let's put a light up there in the tower and then two little lanterns on either side. This is my favorite part. We're gonna do little dots going up our stairway so it looks like there's little lights lighting the pathway for the students. There's also little lights going around the edge of the balcony. So we can put tiny little lights there. We'll put a few windows in this building. And then last thing is let's put teeny tiny windows up in our dormitory tower. So it looks like that whole thing is full of windows. And maybe, can I do it? Yep, I'll do it. Two little offices up there. Maybe a couple in this one. All right. That looks good. All right, since we've got some light in the carriage house, we're gonna put just a little bit of that yellow reflecting on the water there. We've got the reflections in the water all around our students. 
so that looks nice. The only thing that I think that I would add for myself is now that the water's dry, it's a little light. So what I would do just to make myself happy is take like my dark blue and add another layer of color to it just around the edges to really deepen that color and make that water nice and dark. So that's the last thing that I would do on this painting. And then I would say, funny, we got it, it's good. So I hope you enjoy this one. It's a long one, cause I got super excited about painting Hogwarts Castle, but I hope you enjoy it. And I can't wait to see what yours look like. So make sure that you post yours in the comments when you finish up, cause I wanna see all your beautiful Hogwarts castles glowing in the moonlight. I think it's gonna be beautiful. I had a great time doing this with you and I hope you enjoy it too. Have a great day and I will paint with you again soon. Thank you.